is very well received by our group. In fact, we're very excited about it. We are just willing to, to work with him, to work with the administration, because there's so many things that we need to do. You know very well that there's a, a big in trade imbalance between the two countries. And with this development, with these announcements, um, this will be a very good opportunity for our export sector to penetrate that, uh, that uh, market. Number one is uh, we're looking at the agricultural sector, the food sector. Number two is the non-traditional sector, which is uh, composed of the, the accessories, fashion accessories, the home decors, and the furnitures, the export of furnitures. Now, I just want to tell you what we have done. Um, we have, uh, the Philippine Russian Business Assembly has already, uh, it has inked a memorandum of agreement with the Russian Philippine Business Council of the, uh, in Moscow, of the Russian Federation of uh, Chamber. In Moscow. So you have a counterpart that, now formally. Yes, we have this working relationship. Now, um, we have already researched about what exhibitions, trade exhibitions that the food sector should get into. Because there are so many exhibitions out there, but we, they need to participate in the right exhibition where they only deal with the importers. Okay? And that's one. Number two, uh, I had the opportunity of bringing in that in two waves, the first wave was the, the fashion accessories group to test the market. And the second is the home decors uh, association to test the market. And they were, they were well received because they don't really know that we produce such beautiful things in the Philippines. So you're looking at a beachhead to that part of the market. Tell us about what kind of foreign direct <laughs> investment is coming in. You mentioned the trade imbalance. That's 4.5% decline in the last few years. Right. But FDI to the Philippines has averaged around one, under 1% 1 over the last five mm -hmm. years as well. What kind of upside in products do you see from Russia coming into the Philippines? Yeah, we're looking at, um, we're looking at their greens, the wheat. They're, they have so much wheat there, uh, which we can explore and, and um, make it an additive, you know. Uh, for the for our bakery products, and also the grains for the for the um, fertilizers and the the feeds, for the uh, livestock feeds. So there's so many many areas that we can really explore. We have to look at the. Um, they're very strong with the, uh, uh, you know, waste solid waste management that we have not tapped, and um, I know this because uh, we have been approached by so many companies who would like to work with the Philippine companies along these lines. Both governments are ready. So it's just about we have to go down to work now and implement what have been agreed on. So it's now in the implementation stage. So um, we in the private sector, especially the Philippine Russian Business Assembly, are just waiting. We are waiting and we are ready to, to assist government in whatever way we can. And Consul Garcia, finally, a lot of this exchange is not just economic, but also socially and culturally. Tell us about the impacts of tourism, <laughs> cultural exchanges, something that can be facilitated through your council, and more importantly, the kind of uh, relationships that you see based on this. Oh yeah, I'm glad that you mentioned this because that's really my favorite mantra. My mantra is really the, that tourism triggers the de development of trade and investment. Because tourism and culture is the, the beginning, the gateway to develop trade and investment. So in the program, we have, together with the, with the Russian Embassy and the Department of Tourism, for, for the tourism players, for them to be uh, tourism ready and to be able to, to welcome the tourists, Russian tourists, we have this program, Meet Russia, wherein uh, we educate the tourism frontliners about the Russian culture, Russian tradition, even Russian cuisine.